Live and exclusive. The Valley Radio Online. Giving you a voice. Keeping you informed. The historic riverside town of Bridge North in Shropshire nestles comfortably into the Severn Valley, less than 30 miles from Birmingham and some 20 miles from Shrewsbury. It was named after a bridge, or brug as it was known in Saxon times, that spanned the river. Tourists from around the world are drawn to this bustling market town, a jewel on the banks of the River Severn. On hand to guide them is a local historian who is an authority on the history of Bridge North and who regularly conducts tours around the town. Today the Valley is in conversation with Derek Croxon about the port of Bridge North and Cartway. What are, what are the origins of uh, Bridge North as a port? Well, we think possibly going back to the time of Athelflaed. She was a daughter of King Alfred and she was tr trying to defend her kingdom of Mercia. Hence, she put a fortification in Bridge North and obviously she'd need a crossing. So we imagine at the time that the bridge was a little bit further downstream, possibly a hundred yards or so. And so, so what you're saying is that the, the original bridge that would have been from the 9th century would have been further downstream? Yeah. Roughly where the island is now. Yes. The island is man-made. Yes. And you reverse the word to let by, called by let. Yes. And in medieval times, that is where they set the fish traps. Okay. So later, we had a alternative crossing which is in use today and originally it would have a gatehouse on and a debtor's prison and a chapel dedicated to Saint Cyril. So when was this uh, when was this site chosen uh, for the bridge? I think in the time when Low Town was starting to develop along with the river trade. So it was all laid out exactly the same as High Town in what they call Burgess Burgage plots after the Burgesses of Bridge North. And this would have been what, in the 15th century or earlier? Around than that? that time. Around that Possibly time. going back to 13th century. Yeah. And then we had large houses starting to be established, Can Hall and one or two others. Can Hall is now the site of the bypass. So obviously, alterations took place and the bridge started to be widened major widening in 1812. So the centre section using metal plates was reconstructed by John Smallman, yes. later to build Quatford Castle, yes. and he had a theatre on the site which is now the new market buildings. What would the original bridge have been like going back into time? Would it have been a pack horse type of bridge? Possibly or, would it, or a so. wooden structure? That's certainly not wood, always stone. Always stone. And at one time they had a great idea to reinforce it with brick. And obviously, brilliant idea, the pressure of the water hit the brick, deflected the water onto the weak stone and sections fell down. Okay. And on the bridge itself, over the centuries, what, what would have been on there? Basically, heavy goods, yeah. horse, carts, um, stagecoaches, yes. because we were on the route to London at one time, and then in 1800 the whole thing changed, yeah. rerouted Cheltenham to Liverpool for the Irish packet, because Ireland was the, fir the last uh, country to come in to the UK. So obviously many uses, tolls were interesting, they paid a toll to come over the bridge. And where, where would the, the toll booths have been? Where, where the clock tower is now? That's the later one. That's exactly. the later one. But yep. the original one was where? Well, it'd be in the gatehouse. In the gatehouse, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, obviously, the trows, you can see the rings on the piers. The trow would be a, a narrow beam boat. Uh, it would be an upgrade from a barge. Right. So, uh, when we get later on the tour, we'll give you a description of what they look like. Well, Derek, we've now entered Cartway. Describe what Cartway was like in, in 1480, 1580, that sort of era. Well, the actual route dates back to the 13th century. So, interestingly, where I'm pointing, now plastered over, possibly timber frame, building dates from 1480. And here, this, alongside the green door, is an entry 
and that was used for horses for their approach to the river because there was no entry under the bridge. So this was an ancient timber frame house. Yeah. You can see where the overhang or jetty used to be yeah. and it's been filled in. On my tours, we like to look at it because at one time above the door it said Bob Holland chimney sweep. And down by the side of the door it used to be a slate and a slate pencil. And when the girls came out of school, they used to leave naughty messages on the slate and Bob used to get extremely upset. <laughs> so this was a wattle and daub building here and the jetty that went down to the river? No, the overhang is the jetty. So now we're looking at what today is called Sanford Guest House. How far does that go back in history? Well, what we're interested in it for is it belonged to a Ben Jones and it was Ben Jones Lodging House and Boatman. Ben used to operate on Wednesdays on the coal run from Coalport to Starport. And his wife, Liza, at this time of day, would be preparing his food for his journey downstream. So what used to happen, Ben, when he came downstream, got to the site of the toll house and used to yell at the top of his voice, Liza, Liza. And obviously, Liza would be preparing his meal and she would traverse onto the bridge and get over or look over the central arch of the bridge and wait for Ben to go underneath and drop his provisions neatly on the barge. And when would, what sort of time period would this be? Well, back, we're going back to the 18th century again or beginning of the 19th century. But these are local characters from Bridge North Past? Exactly. So there's a number of them and we'll talk about them a little bit later on. And interestingly, we're looking across to Bassa Villa and it goes back because at one time it was called the Beehive, yes, and later the Magpie, and now Bassa Villa. And that, that's a fairly old building, isn't it? Around about 1580? 1591. 1591. Yeah. So actually, it is a prefab. These frames were actually constructed in the Great Forest of Morph and brought into sections and assemb assembled on site. So we have here a prefabricated building and we've actually got some of the numbers visible we've got v and 2 r5 and then a little bit over here we've got an x and a 3 x is 10 so these are all the pre-assembled sections to construct the building so where we're standing now is the site of what was the red lion public house yeah that would disappear in around 1887 because we had an establishment that required the road and it was called the gas works. As I understand it, the labour force that constructed the road were unemployed because it was an extremely bad winter. So the, how the construction was done was there was troughs or barges bringing sugar from Bristol they retained the heavy-duty sugar bags and laid them for foundations to create the road and it has a very simple name, Sugar Bag Lane. Derek, this is probably my most favourite house in the whole of Bridge North. Can, what can you tell us about it? Well, we had a Richard Foster, or Forrester, and he worked for Bishop Bonner in London and he eventually came to Bridge North and he had a fleet of barges and from the profits he created the house and the date is 1580. So obviously it's had many occupants and at the time it was called Foster's Folly for the vast amount of money he'd spent on it. And the next association we have on it because it's known as Bishop Percy's house and Bishop Percy was born here in 1739 and attended the local grammar school and he became Bishop of Dramar in Ireland. He was famous for his translation of old English poetry and the uh, authors of the day used to meet here and discuss their works and what they were producing at the time. 
And then we have the Civil War, 1646 here, and a lot of damage in the higher level. And it was occupied by about four or five families until they got the high street sorted out. When you say it was, was damaged in the higher level there, what, was that from the fire? or this was from the fire in the Civil War. So anyone that was unhoused, they uh, occupied it, about four or five families, until they got their higher level sorted out. And then, obviously, had many uses. It was a huckster shop selling small items. First floor was used at one time for the hand weaving of carpets. If you actually go into the building, on the right hand side, first floor, you'll find completely different flooring. And we understand that was where they brought the hand weaving frames through. Later, it was used as a foundry and two families, Rushtians and Barkers, used it as a foundry. And then in the 1940s, it was handed over to the boys club who were here uh, until 1950, I think. It was Around 1950. Well, 1946, I think. So, after that, it was put up for domestic use, and up to date, it is not being sold. So, we're pointing out to you, we're looking at a series here, and we've got at least three crosses representing ten, and possibly another one just out of view. So, obviously, it, is, it was a prefab at the time, and on the ex interior we have interesting assembly marks because they used a circle and a line, a circle and a line to match up. You move to the next section, a circle, two lines, a circle and two lines, and so on to create your building. And how old are these buildings here? Basically what we're looking at is 18th century, but originally they're sandstone block and brick faced. And one or two of them, as we'll see, were possibly timber framed and later brick faced. So we have an old building right in the corner and that frontage is at least 400 years old. So we have another establishment. This one was called the Tumbling Sailors. Obviously, they had too much to drink and they were tumbling over. And I'm pointing to another one where the hanging baskets are. That was the Cooper's Arms. Then the tall building next to that was the Ship and Anchor. And then, obviously, across the road, we had the famous Blackie Boy. And that was one of the notorious pubs in the town, along with one of the three that I've already established. We had the Bull and the Hop Pole. And now, once again, we're looking across to the Black Boy. When you were saying when, when you were saying the Black Boy is actually notorious, what was it notorious for? Drunken sailors. So we are looking at another pub called the Bush, and next door, on the site of two medieval cottages, was a pub called the Railway Tavern. And at this point, on this juncture, you're about halfway between two ends of the railway tunnel. So the railway came here in 1862 and brought a large number of Irish into the town. The top half of the cartway was occupied by them and another street in the town called Cliff Road. So there's many families in the town go back to the time of the railway and their ancestors working on the tunnel. Well, Derek, that was a fascinating tour of the Porter Bridge North and Cartway. You're the local tour guide here. If people want to contact you to be taken round personally, how do they get hold of you? Basically, I operate from the visitor centre, the library in Lisley Street. The tours are on Friday and Saturday at 2.15, and I have a telephone number that is 01746 767. If groups want to have a visit to Bridge North, I'm available at most times of the day, but I do stress that I don't work after midnight. <laughs> Derek Croxon, thank you very much. Thank you very much.